Hi, Tony. Hi. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah. I was just telling them that you wrote a song uh, on the uh, previous album that she did. Yes. You mean the world to me? No, not that album. The, um, the new album. The new album yeah. you did. Yeah. Which song? Uh, this is the very first song on the album. It's entitled um, "Come On Over Here." Oh, okay. So we're, we just started talking about Tony Braxton, but there's a lot um, happened before that. So let's talk about the beginning a little bit. How did you come about? Uh, how did it, how did you get into the music industry? Um, I, I got into the music industry by way of um, two guys that kind of made a promise to me that I met in Detroit that when they hooked up with Dallas Austin, they would give me a call. So when I went through for them, then they called me and I went down to Atlanta to work with um, L.A. on some projects. Because you've been um, writing, singing, producing ever since you were a little kid? Well, ever since I was about 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And you even sang in, you did the, it's kind of, um, how do you say, well, kind of cliche, because you also sang in gospel choirs and things uh -huh, like that. Right. Yeah. Yes. And then you met these guys and they have to. Yeah, yeah, I met them like after that, after that, the gospel scene, when I kind of decided what I really wanted to be, then I ran into those guys. And when did you decide that? Because you, I think, um, reading your story, you decided very, at a very early age, what you wanted to be. And it looks like you really, um, maybe you were 10 years old and you said to yourself, okay, this is the. Yeah, I was about, yeah, 12 or 13 was around that time. And that's that's kind of young yeah. to decide to get into music. Some people get into it a lot earlier. But I think when, at that age, it was, it was pretty much, it was really my choice, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes and also the direction that you want, the kind of music that you wanted to make. Exactly, yeah. So I, I was pretty focused on who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do at an early age. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people get into music a lot earlier, but it's not pretty much their choice. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then you did get to meet uh, the big guys, and right. you got to work with them. Right. So wasn't it intimidating at no, first? No, it wasn't intimidating because I always set my mind to. Um, I said that I when I when I met LA and Face that I would meet them at a equal level, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's how it happened. So I'm glad it happened that way because I'm I'm not that really starstruck a lot. I'm not. I can't be. It's hard for me to be starstruck about certain people, people that I really respect. I'm mm -hmm. not starstruck about. I just I just like, I'm glad with the, with the opportunity to meet him. You know? Yeah. So it, was, it was cool. Sure, I understand. About two weeks ago, you did um, the opening for the Mariah Carey, um, right. the Mariah Carey show. But I was wondering, because since you are, well, first, you were first a songwriter and producer and then started really, uh, then you really came out as your own, right. your own artist. Wasn't it, isn't it strange then to go on a stage in big, big venues like that? I think it's just... Um, it's just another mode you have to prepare yourself for, you know. Uh -huh. Studio is one thing and stage is another. What so is the difference? The difference is, well, with studio, you don't have to deal with people. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in stage, you it's a you have to deal with a lot of people. You perform for people. In the studio, you just, you're laying down songs, so you, you don't have an audience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you're pre-recording what the audience is going to hear, so it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. It doesn't require a lot of personality in the studio like it does on stage. You don't think so? It's studio. easier to, 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 to put out your emotions because the album that is really personal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to ask you something about it, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, it's really personal. So you're in the studio and you're kind of by yourself, not right. really, but kind of by yourself. And you put out all this, you know, yeah. you're giving yourself. Right. And then all of a sudden, all these thousands of people come and they expect the same from you. And right. then what do you do? Well, it's easy to transfer it. I think... Um, because what I what I write in the studio and what I record in the studio is what I do live. So mm -hmm. it's just it's just two totally different modes. I think so you, know what, you don't have to have fashion when you are in the studio mm -hmm. either. So <laughs> it's a big difference. And so um, I feel like at live concerts is much like doing videos. Yeah. You know, it's the same same type of energy you have to have. Mm -hmm. you have and how do you mind. prepare for a live performance? Right before, um, like well, fifteen minutes before you go on. I'm very quiet. I don't talk to anybody really. And um I say a prayer, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I have a drink of water, and that's about it. And really. that's it. Yeah. Okay. But you want to be by yourself, not by yourself. Yeah, you. I'm like, I'm not like in a room by myself, but I'm standing by myself 15 mm -hmm. minutes before then. Yeah. Okay. Really quiet and preserved. And otherwise, privately. I mean, when you're just hanging yeah. out, what is it? Is it a really big difference between Tony Rich, the artist, and Tony Rich, just Tony Rich? No, not really. I think I think I'm pretty much the same person. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I okay. kind of like that also. You know, where I'm, with, I'm be tripping a lot. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, be I'm just pretty much the same person. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you're from Atlanta. Well, you live in Atlanta. You're not really right. from Atlanta, I'm but Detroit. Uh huh. Yeah. And I was in Atlanta just a couple of weeks ago, and I find the people there are very relaxed. You know, very, very everybody. Yeah, they're just, like stress free there. Yeah. Very nice, and they speak to you when you don't speak to them. So it's everybody. Every, like every store you walk in, people say, "Hey, how you doing?" Exactly. Yeah. Does it does it does it help you to live in an environment like that? Yeah, I mean because um, living in Detroit was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, you spoke to someone didn't speak to you, you're liable to get into trouble with them. So it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So it's the southern hospitality that really yes. helps. Yeah, to get. I love you. it. Yeah, I, love I did. It, I did. Like we're about to see your video. Uh, nobody knows. Why was that the first single from the album? Because. Uh, I got to be honest with you. When I first heard the single, right. I thought, well, this sounds a little bit like, you know, you know who. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> and then I listened to the album and the, the album is so diverse and it has so much, uh, shows so many different sides of you. Right. that I wondered why you picked this song to be the first single. Well, we, we did uh, what's called market research mm -hmm. on a, quite a few, like four or five of the songs on the album to see which one would have the best response. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows had a crossover appeal to country, pop, yeah. everywhere. We thought it had a crossover appeal to R&B. We, we thought it actually could start in R&B, but it didn't. And so what happened was once the single charted like number two in the States, then um, you know the big pop, the R&B stations yeah, jumped yeah. on at the last minute, but pop radio delivered on it from the, from the, you know, the oh, beginning. Yeah. But that song had the most appeal, yeah. you know? Because uh, I think uh, the group Alabama, the country group, mm -hmm. I think they're about to cover Nobody Knows. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's a, it's just an all-across, across-the-board type of hit. Yeah. yeah. And where does it, because since you did everything yourself in the album, on the album, uh, how did you get it to be so diverse? Um, Are you like a kind of schizophrenic kind of guy? You have different well, personalities? Yeah, yeah, in a way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of moody. And I like a lot of different things. I I was just hoped like when I was recording that everything that I'm about would come across. So I um pretty much whatever my mood was, I wrote off the mood. And that's the best way to do it. And I didn't really I made sure that I didn't have all live instruments. Because mm -hmm. when you have all live instruments, you kinda give your album one dimension. I like dimension, so some some songs I picked to have live instruments, some didn't, you know. So I wanted I wanted really I really wanted it to move. A little better. It than does. Just one level. It does. Well, let's let's see um, the video first, and we'll talk more okay. when we get back. All okay. Right. Nobody knows Tony Rich. This is the music factory. 